25, they say a group of learners used the reaction between excess hydrochloric acid and magnesium ribbon to investigate one of the factors that influences the rate of a chemical reaction. They say the reaction that takes place is, uh, as is given there, uh, magnesium plus two hydrochloric acid gives us magnesium chloride plus hydrogen. They say the learners follow the method uh, shown below to conduct the investigation at room temperature. So for experiment one, they place a piece of magnesium ribbon in a conical flask and add 50 cubic centimeters uh, of hydrochloric acid of known concentration, all right? So we would know the concentration of that magnesium, uh, of that uh, hydrochloric acid rather. Uh, they say simultaneously, they start the stopwatch and close the flask with rubber, uh, with a rubber stopper containing um, uh, the delivery tube. Okay, so we, we would measure the amount of hydrogen that's going in there. Okay, so they measure the volume of hydrogen formed in intervals of 20 seconds. Right, and then for method two, um, or rather experiment two, they repeat steps one to three, but now they use 15 cubic centimeters, right, of the same hydrochloric acid diluted with 50 cubic centimeters of distilled water. So what are they actually doing? They are lowering the concentration of the hydrochloric acid, right? Okay, so of course that's going to lower the, the, the rate of the reaction. All right, so the first thing is they say define the term reaction rate. Remember by definition, we say that it is the change in concentration of products formed per unit of time. Okay, or you can say that it is the change in the concentration of reactants used uh, per unit of time. Okay, and they say write down the conclusion of this investigation. Remember what I just said right now, that uh, the lower the concentration, okay, the lower the concentration uh, of hydrochloric acid, the lower the reaction rate. Okay, so we are... Um, showing the relationship between the dependent and the independent variable. Our independent variable right now would be the concentration of hydrochloric acid and our dependent variable would be the rate of the reaction. All right, now uh, for the next question, they say the concentration of uh, two cubic, uh, rather of hydrochloric acid is two moles per cubic decimeters. Okay, so we want to find out. They say name two conditions that the learners had to keep the same to ensure that this is a fair test. Now, please remember, guys, uh, to ensure that it's a fair test, everything else must be kept the same. So there must all, only be one independent variable. So concentration um, is the independent variable. So two other things that we need to keep the same is the temperature Okay, uh, uh, temperature of the reaction. All right, um, number two, uh, the state of uh, uh, magnesium ribbons. Okay, or we can say the state of division. Okay, or you can say the amount of magnesium. Right, so the state of division of magnesium ribbons okay uh, you can talk about also the amount of magnesium ribbons okay so those are all the variables that we would keep the same uh, if you can think of one um, please also you can include it in the comment section all right so the next question they say to us after completing the investigation the learners represented the results obtained uh, each uh, obtained during each experiment, okay, on the graph below. So for experiment one, you can see there that uh, experiment one occurs at a faster reaction because we reached that completion much sooner than we did for experiment two. Okay, so now let's 
let's let's find out what the next question is. They say give a reason why the same volume of hydrogen gas is formed in both experiments. Right now, what you need to remember, ladies and gents, is that um, uh, in this case you had the same amount of uh, magnesium ribbon, right? It is the hydrochloric acid that was in excess, so meaning that the limiting reagent was the magnesium ribbon, right? So which means in this case, um, the reactions essentially would produce the same amount of uh, hydrogen gas, okay? So you can say that uh, the magnesium Um, was the limiting reagent right in both experiments all right so in this case or you can simply just state that we had the same amount of magnesium ribbon there Okay, so let's go on to the next question. Okay, so uh, they say to us for 5.6, write down the volume of hydrogen gas formed during the first minute, okay, uh, in experiment one. Okay, so in the first minute, let's check there. Okay, so that's after 60 seconds. So in experiment one, after 60 seconds, and uh, now that's experiment two. So the amount of hydrogen that would be formed, the volume would be 60 cubic centimeters. Okay, so in experiment one, that's 60 cubic centimeters. Right, and in experiment two, Let's check there. That would be the amount right there. So that looks like we've got 40. And remember, uh, if I look at this, each step is increasing by 2. And how do I know that um, that's actually uh, increasing by 1? Okay, so in this case, this would be 41 and 42. Right, and in this case, it means it would be 42 cubic centimeters. All right, so that's the amount of uh, hydrogen that would be formed. Now, they ask us the question, which one of, uh, of the experiments, experiment one, uh, experiment one or two, uh, took place at a faster rate? Use the graph to explain. So please do note, it must have been experiment one. Okay, so that's experiment one. Right, and do note, they want us to explain why that is the case. Right, that we produced more uh, hydrogen, right, uh, in experiment one within the same amount of time, okay? So uh, you we saw that uh, the amount of hydrogen that was made in one minute was much higher than the one that we made in uh, uh, in the one in the other one okay right now in the other experiment um, we can explain that that way okay uh, so we want to now calculate so that's uh, 5.8 they say to us uh, calculate the average reaction rate right with respect to the magnesium in grams per second, right, in experiment one, right, if the molar uh, volume at room temperature is 24 cubic decimeters. Now, ladies and gents, please does just follow this. So the rate of reaction must be in grams per second. So I need to find out the amount, uh, the mass of magnesium, right, uh, that was used within that amount of time. But now, remember, what do I have in experiment one? I know how much 
of uh, you know the gas I formed that's in cubic decimeters, right? So I formed 60 cubic centimeters. So I'm going to say that number of moles of hydrogen would be the volume divided by the molar volume. So in this case, I've got uh, the volume is 60 cubic uh, centimeters, but I'm going to convert it to cubic decimeters because my molar volume is also in cubic decimeters. So I'm going to say divide by 60 divided by 8,000, right? So that would give me 0 0.06, okay? 60 divided by 1,000 gives me 0 0.06. And now I'm going to divide that by 24. Okay, so let's find uh, that out. So I'm going to have 0 0.06 divided by 24. Okay, so I get 0 0.0025. That's moles uh, in this case. So that's the number of moles of hydrogen. But I'm looking for the mass of hydrogen, right? Sorry, not the mass of hydrogen, but the mass of uh, uh, magnesium that I would have used. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is look at my ratio between hydrogen and magnesium. So let's go back to our reaction. This says to me, <clears throat> apologies there, for every one mole of hydrogen, I would have used one mole of magnesium. So for every one, there is one. Okay, so that tells me that the amount of magnesium, therefore, would also be, so therefore it means the number of moles of magnesium would be equal to 0 0.0025 moles. And the reason for that is that because it is a one-to-one -one ratio. Right, now we're looking for the mass of magnesium, right? So I'm going to say, right, for the mass of magnesium, this is going to be number of moles multiplied by molar mass. So that's 0 0.025. Uh, sorry, that's 0 0.0025. And the molar mass of magnesium, please note, okay, that is going to be, uh, from the periodic table, we always uh, know that to be 24, right? So we get, uh, let's find that out. Okay, so uh, our calculator is misbehaving. Uh, so we've got 0 0.0025 times, uh, we've got 24 there. That gives us 0 0.06. So the mass of magnesium, this is the amount of magnesium that we lost. Okay, right. So now we want to calculate the, um, the rate of the reaction. Right? So what does this mean? Okay, because I don't have sufficient space, I'm going to do it right at the bottom there. So I'm going to say the rate of my reaction is change in mass divided by the change in time. So notice in this case, my mass changed by 0 0.06. So I'm going to say 0 0.06. Okay, so 0 0.06, okay, uh, minus 0. In fact, uh, perhaps I should say the other way around, 0 minus 0 0.006. So that's final minus initial. Remember, we used up all of the zinc, uh, of the magnesium, rather. So I ended up with nothing, but I started with 0 0.06. So this is divided by the time that it took was uh, 60 seconds. Okay, that's in one minute. And in this case, I can already see how this is going to give us a, a rate of negative 0 0.001 grams per second. And the reason it's, it is negative 
is because there is a loss in that mass. Okay, you don't necessarily need to put that negative there. Okay, uh, so please make sure that your answer is positive. So rate must always be represented as a positive answer. Okay, so that is how we are going to calculate that uh, there. And that's how we come to the end of question five.